thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'll try and keep it uh, at 20 minutes, maybe shorter, <laughs> uh, so I have enough time for a coffee. Uh, in the next uh, few slides, I'm going to show you some results on the uh, uh, direction analysis on the GCM SMS uh, system we, we're currently uh, running in Runcorn. Uh, it's probably a good idea to remind ourselves some of the new criteria uh, that Alex was talking about yesterday as well for dioxin confirmation. So we need to, uh, when we use GCM SMS, uh, we need to look at uh, additional confirmation points and we also have to be careful with the way we select our transitions uh, for every single uh, compound. So uh, we need to monitor at least two specific precursor ions each of these ions uh, using a corresponding product ion. That's, that's quite important for, for the uh, confidence in the results. <clears throat> also, the, uh, the maximum uh, tolerance for the ion abundance should be within 15% um, for the selected SRMs, keeping the collision energy and gas, gas pressure the same for each of the transitions for, for, for a compound. The third point, uh, uh, equally important, is to have the uh, unit mass uh, resolution on the quadrupoles um, on the system we're running uh, the samples on, uh, or better, obviously. And also, uh, we have to uh, fulfill further criteria as described in methods like 1613 or 1668, except the obligation to use GC high resolution uh, MS. And this is an example of the sensitivity compliance and linearity of response which refers to the percentage RSDs that should not exceed 20% across the calibration curve. Uh, what you'll see next is examples of chromatography instrument sensitivity expressed as a limit of quantitation, linearity of response, repeatability of, of an injected um, standard and samples, matrix samples, and also uh, routine analysis of real samples and the direct comparison of GCM SMS results with the uh, GC high resolution mass spec for the same set of samples. Now, uh, for all the experiments, we use the TSQ8000 non-production unit, so it's based on the existing TSQ8000 instruments, and that was coupled with the trace 1310 GC. And we use a tri plus RSH to uh, do the sample introduction, and data processing was done with Target Quan 3.1. And uh, I'll have to thank Frank Theobald for helping me with the Target Quan, coming from a different software. So uh, I really appreciate his help. <coughs> uh, for all the uh, the samples, we use the splitless split splitless injector, operated in splitless mode using two microliter injections. So we did not use large volume injections for any of these experiments. Uh, with a single gooseneck liner, and uh, the solvent uh, for the sample prep was no name, and washing the, sample, uh, the, the needle was dichloromethane and no name, and so on. Typical uh, GC column for dioxins, a 60 meter 0.25, 0.25, with a 1.2 flow. And uh, the GC uh, oven uh, temperature program was slightly longer than 32 minutes, so pretty quick, but uh, enough to achieve uh, the chromatography resolution we wanted. Now, again, coming back to the way we have to select these uh, transitions for dioxins, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward for, for chlorinated uh, dioxins to select uh, transitions according to the new criteria. So, for example, in this uh, daughter ion spectrum, you can see for 237 TCDD, it's quite easy to go from 320 to 257, uh, and from 322 to 259. Run a solvent injection, decide which one is giving you more intensity, and then you'll decide which one is going to be your quine ion and confirmation ion, pretty much. And we've done that, and we ended up with this longer list of uh, labeled and native compounds, each of them with one transition to com quantify one to confirm, and you can see that the collision energies are not exactly the same for all, and the reason being we used uh, the auto SRM functionality to optimize the collision energies. If you're not familiar with this piece of software, we can talk after the, I would like to explain it now briefly, but if you have more questions, we can talk after that. You can automate the, uh, the amount of energy you require for each transition in a very, very fast way. You just need an internal standard, uh, a calibration standard such as an EPA CS5 or CS4, 
run your samples, and you can use a profile of energies to select where the uh, maximization of your signal occurs, and then that's it, pretty much. Why do you do that? Do you need to do it? Uh, if you don't do it and you use a generic 22 electron volts as we used in the previous uh, work, you get uh, a decrease of 18% if you want of your sensitivity as compared to uh, an optimized collision energy. So this is an average increase of 20, almost 20% as you can see from this example. We also used the acquisition mode was, uh, it's called timed SRM. The timed SRM uh, acquires Data, uh, if you know the retention time of a compound, you can uh, optimize the duty uh, cycle of your instrument so that you don't waste any time. You're just focusing on the, tar on the targets, basically. And also, uh, the, because the dueling is really effective, you can improve the sensitivity uh, and lower your detection limits. And uh, I can show you an example of how this time SRM looks like. You basically use uh, a segment, a mini segment for every single congeneer, unlike classical segmented SRM, where you, even for the sector instruments, you use five windows, if you remember in VSIR. Here we don't. We use uh, a seg mini segment for each of the compounds, and as a result, you increase your sensitivity by at least 9%. So 18% with another 9% only from these two small optimizations. <clears throat> and if you couple that with maybe a post injection in, in splitless, you can even go further. And I know for a fact that you can increase the sensitivity by a factor of at least two if you do a post injection. Um, the standards we used were typical Wellington Lab 1613. I would like to uh, thank um, Brock for, for sending us the, uh, the standards. And uh, the sample extracts were uh, provided by um, Esteban Abad Lab and also Alexander Kotz. Uh, so we didn't do any sample prep ourselves, which uh, we're pretty lucky not to do it. And uh, this is a mixture of manual extraction and power prep, uh, automated extractions for, for, for this sample. So I'm not going to talk about this in details for right now. Dioxin analysis starts, good results on dioxins means good chromatography, right? So, and also selectivity should be achieved. So let's have a look at how the chromatography looks like for a CSL standard on the um, left-hand side, which is 0.1 picograms per microliter. And this is TCDD, quantitation ion, confirmation ion, with the corresponding uh, labeled internal standard, and the feed sample, which is, was spiked at similar levels and also for TCDD. And the next slides, I'm gonna go quickly through the next slides because it's basically TCDD, PCDD, and so on. So you can have a look uh, yourself on how the selectivity of this instrumentation uh, performs for hexadioxins, for heptadioxins, OCDDs, TCDF. Again, the same levels in the matrix as in the standard. PCDFs, hexafurans, heptafurans, and uh, octafurans. Now, the next thing is, of course, how sensitive is uh, such an instrument for dioxin analysis? Uh, and, uh, of course, the better the sensitivity, um, it's, 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 it's a great thing to have a very sensitive instrument, but of course you have to keep in mind that you have to meet all the criteria. Uh, so the ion abundance should be within range and the response factor should be in, in range and so on. But we're aiming for at least one-fifth of the level in, of interest. And the level of interest is normally uh, the maximum limits, and we have some examples of maximum limits for different matrices, because uh, it's matrix dependent, obviously. <coughs> and if we look again at the commission guidelines, the yellow Q, is defined for GCMSMS as the lowest concentration point on a calibration that gives acceptable and consistent deviation to the average response, relative response factors that were calculated across the calibration curve. And this is again what Alexander said yesterday, so it's a repeat of that. And we went for this empirical way of detecting the LOQs in, uh, we didn't go for the signal-to-noise approach or for the statistical approach. So what we did, we took a CSL standard and we diluted it a few times in different uh, concentration range, and we injected this a few times, and we, uh, we looked at the criteria that 
for example, the iron ratios were within the 15%, the response factors were within the 20%. And this is the yellow cues calculated for each of the, uh, the native compounds in five times diluted CSL. Now, uh, there's uh, one thing you can see here is like a, a trend of incremental trend here in the, uh, in the yellow cues. And this is obviously due to the fact that the CSL standard contains higher amounts of octa chlorinated compounds. Okay, concentration is higher for the octa as, co as compared to the TC, uh, DD, TCDF. So the next uh, logical step is to use a, a different standard which contains the natives, all the natives, irrespective of the chlorination degree, at exactly the same concentration, dilute that down, and then you get the more realistic values, I would say, of the uh, LOQs. Linearity of response for dioxins, obviously, we're not looking at the coefficient of... Uh, uh, determination. We're not looking at the R squared values. Uh, we instead we're looking at the uh, response factors, and uh, we use the CSL to CS4 um, set of standards to to plot the linear linear response. And the standard percentage RSDs was an average of 2.2 percent. So we we not we need not to exceed 20 percent. Remember from the uh, regulation criteria, and the highest value was 4.7 uh, percent for um, hexa CDF congenia, which is also, no, yeah, it's an internal standard. So uh, very, uh, very robust results, and we are qu quite happy with that. Uh, the next logical step was to ask ourselves, how is this instrument performing at low level when you inject a low level uh, standard and you not internally standardize your response? So what you see here is a 16 repeat injections of the CSL standard and the calculated percentage RSDs uh, which should be within the 15%. Again, this is non-corrected internal standard data. And uh, we get lower values for all the other congeners. And this is the, of course, the concentration of each of the chlorination degrees. Now, interestingly, if you calculate the instrument limit of quantitation from these results, you end up with exactly the same numbers as observed before in the diluted CSL, which is very, uh, very good news for us. The ion ratios, again, one criteria to meet when using GCM-SMS is to be within the 15% uh, when you calculate the ion ratios across your calibration curve against the measured value. So we went that way. We measured the ion ratios from a CS3 standard, uh, and we were well within 5% with that. If you ask me how about the theoretical ion ratios, I do have data for that, and we are well within 10% with that as well. So if you want to see that data, please let me know. Routine w uh, use, we, uh, we use these uh, samples that were kindly provided by Alex and Esteban, and we, we tested the, uh, the performance of our GCM SMS against the, uh, the high-resolution sector instruments. And what you see here is a spiked feed sample. Uh, in red is the GCM SMS results. Concentration now is the concentration in picogram per gram and the high-resolution data is here. And this is on congenial basis. If you look at the tech congenial basis, you can see that we are almost for all the compounds within the 20%. Uh, ex one exception is that one. But again, this takes into account the GC high-resolution data, and this uh, takes that as a gold standard value, if you want, not the consensus value. Another example is for the milk powder, with with very good uh, agreement between the two systems. Uh, and this is on the picogram tech program. As you can see here, for example, this is a, even for the sector data, this is an estimated value. It's not a, a real value. It's just estimated by being lower than 0 0.07 picogram per gram. And the fish, a fish sample with the congeneer expressed as picograms tech per gram. Now, if you do total tech of the samples we analyzed, were the expectation is to be within 20% from the high resolution uh, uh, data. And what you can see here is we are well within 10% with our results. Uh, one mentioning here is for the egg fat samples, one sample was extracted from 0.5 grams of fat and the other one from one gram. And we are we're having very, very close values, okay? Uh, for the egg fat, we have two injections per point in this case, 
for the fish we have single injections, for the milk powder one injection, spike feed one injection, for the mixed animal fat we have 13 repeat injections. What you see here is an average of 13 repeat injections and you can ask me, yeah, where is the standard deviation? Well, it's not plotted, it's 5%. And you, can, you have to believe me, I can show you the data after that. And for the fish feed sample is 4%, again for 13 repeat injections at that level. Um, so if we sum up briefly, uh, the TSQ8000 with an asterisk, again, uh, it's, uh, it's an instrument that you can confidently use for uh, dioxin confirmation. Uh, hopefully in June, July, we're going to have this uh, published, officially published. The yellow cues obtained were lower than 0.1 picogram per microliter. The sensitivity, we think, we believe, strong believe it's enough, and we have confidence that these results at low level, uh, they, they meet all the, cri the other criteria, such as iron ratio abundance, uh, and also the uh, percentage areas this for the response factors. The tech values for the uh, calculated from the GCM SMS were very, very close to those from the GC high resolution instrument. Uh, and again, me as a user coming from a high resolution, uh, from a sector instrument, I've used that for quite a few years. Uh, my expectations uh, were lower, obviously, and uh, I was quite surprised to see that uh, the, the GSM SMS instrumentation is getting closer and closer, more sensitive and more robust as well um, uh, by the day, basically. So uh, all in one, we can, we can confidently start using this technology, in my opinion, uh, for dioxins and for POPs analysis. Uh, there's a little bit more to add, and this is obviously the acknowledgement for Esteban and Manuela for their tremendous help with the data and, and discussions. Also, Alex was very, very keen to, uh, you know, spend some of his time with me on the phone and uh, help me out with some of these uh, yellow key issues. And uh, I would like to thank to Brock for offering us um, uh, some of the standards for free and you for your attention. Hopefully we have time for a coffee as well. Thank you. Thank you.